Now we're going to talk about the process skill of consider all cases. I'm not going to give you any background about this process skill. I want you to first solve the 700 level question for yourself and, and then we're going to discuss the applicability of this skill. This question is from OG Advanced Book. So pause the video, solve the question and resume when you're ready. Good luck. All right, let's solve this question. Each entry in the multiplication table, this is the multiplication table, is an integer, which means each entry is an integer that is either positive, negative, or zero. So basically each of these numbers is positive, negative, or zero. What is the value of A? We need to figure out value of A. Relatively straightforward question statement. Now the key thing over here is that we need to analyze this multiplication table. So before we go ahead looking at the questions, looking at the individual statements, we need to first do a thorough analysis of these, uh, of this multiplication table. So what we do is a times a, a square is equal to d. Then you have a times b, a times b is equal to e. Then you have c times a, C times A is equal to F. Let's come to the next column. AB, you already have this as E. B square is equal to G. Then BC is equal to H. Then let's come to the last column. CA, you already have the value of CA as F. CB, you already have it as H here. Then C square, C square is equal to J. Okay, so these are the values from the multiplication table. So you always need to write, uh, extract those before you move on to the answer, before you move on to the individual statements, okay? So we need to figure out the value of A, okay? So let's look at statement one. So statement one says H is not equal to zero. Now where is H? H is here, right? H is what? B, C is equal to H, which is not equal to zero. What does that mean? That means that B and C are not equal to zero. Okay, But does it give us any information about A? Not really because H appears only with B and C. There's no other linkage with, with, any, with A. Uh, there's no other linkage that can give us a value of A, which means that this information is not sufficient to find out the value of A. So this is not sufficient. Okay, now let's create our answer choices here, A, B, C, D, and E. A is not an option, D is not an option. Okay, now we take a look at statement two. Now statement two says that C is equal to F. Okay, now C is equal to F, that's your, that's, that's one, um, inf one bit of information. The other bit of information that you need to get from here is, from the multiplication table, C, A, C is equal to F. Okay, so let's bring that A, C is equal to F. That's your second equation. Okay, now you observe these two equations and you know what you'll end up doing is you'll look at this C and F cancel out, which means that A is equal to one, which means that this is sufficient, which means that the correct answer is choice B. Okay, you'll arrive at B as the correct answer. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that sounds good, but there is a big issue which you did not consider. There is a very, very big issue. Remember, go back to your information. Each of these entities over here, each of these entities can be positive, negative or zero. So what if C is equal to F is equal to zero? Okay. What if C and F, they are equal according to statement number two, and these two values are actually zero. In that case, AC is equal to F will be true for any value of A, okay? For any value of A, which means that statement two is not sufficient, okay? Which means that B is not the correct answer okay so one thing that i before i conclude the before i finish off the solution i want you to realize what has happened here 
because you didn't consider all the possible cases and in this case the possible case was c is equal to f is equal to zero which was given to you in the question statement okay and in fact even if this was not given to you the very fact that it's an integer means that this the integer puts the conceptual constraint on each of the values that they, they can be positive negative or zero okay so again the very fact that you didn't consider the case in which the individual numbers could be zero led you to mark choice b as the correct answer which was actually the wrong answer okay so very very important to apply all these uh, to apply this process skill okay now let's finish up our solution we need to now combine statements one and two and see if we can get to the answer okay so what's given over here because h is not equal to zero what you get is that b c is not equal to zero which implies you already said that we already said that b and c are individually not equal to zero okay now c is equal to f now you combine this information with the information that a c is equal to f and c is equal to f and you can get that a is equal to 1 because now this particular case is not applicable because b and c are because c is not equal to 0 according to statement number 1 okay so now the correct answer actually is choice c together they are sufficient all right consider all cases process skill is a very critical one and it's often overlooked in fact if you don't apply this process skill properly, you will make errors in difficult questions such as the one that you just solved. Actually, just to let you know, the test makers actually, while creating these difficult questions, rely on your inability to apply this process skill. So, start building your ability to apply this process skill. And one more thing that I want you to focus on here is that the application of this process skill has got very little to do with your conceptual understanding. Now, we're going to talk about this in detail in the videos to follow, but the next video, we're going to talk about the last process skill and that is apply constraints.